Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times. This Monday, December 13, 2021. For today's editorial, WPS dispute may drive some to piracy. The small fisher folk relying on the bounty of fishing grounds in the West Philippine Sea or WPS deserve more attention, especially from the government. Ignoring their welfare may have some security consequences. Their interests are hardly mentioned, as nations including the Philippines claim rocks, reefs, and other similar features in what would seem to be in the middle of nowhere. Of course, the WPS more popularly known as the South China Sea is not nowhere. In economic terms, more than 60% of maritime trade passes through the area. In defense terms, the area is strategic for superpowers, particularly China and the United States. Caught in between them is the Philippines, which claims parts of the WPS. The problem, of course, has to do with overlapping claims by China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. All the claimants have their reasons to desire the area, perhaps including speculations that there might be fossil fuel deposits below the seabed. There has been discussion about a possible revenue-sharing agreement between the Philippines and China, despite the absence of definitive proof that the deposits are actually there. What is indisputable is the fact that the area has been the traditional fishing grounds for Filipinos and other fisherfolk from the countries that also claim the WPS. And when nations clash, the interests of small stakeholders are often drowned out. Realistically, the dispute over territories is unlikely to be resolved soon. The geopolitical issues are far too complex. In the meantime, what happens to the fishermen? There should be an interim agreement or some understanding among the claimants that address their means of living. Help now! In the Philippines, fisher folk are among the poorest of the poor. When they are kept out of rich fishing grounds, those in outriggers, who are typically Filipinos, are crowded out by larger vessels, according to Rafael Rafi Alunan III. He recalls this observation from his tenure as Interior Secretary years ago. He is now Chairman of the Philippine Council for Foreign Relations, a private think tank composed mainly of retired diplomats and cabinet officials. Some deprived fisherfolk turn to maritime piracy because they are unable to fish for a living, Mr. Lunan told this newspaper. This may not be surprising in retrospect, but the disputed territories issue is rarely linked to domestic security issues. Maritime piracy is a global problem, with an annual toll of some $28 billion, and it is a serious problem in the Philippines, particularly in the South. The authorities should look into this link because it sheds light on a new dimension to the international dispute. Policymakers should be more attentive to the opportunity losses of fisherfolk and poor people in general, who may be driven to desperate means of survival. Smuggling, human trafficking, and the illegal drug trade are some other major security concerns in the Philippines. Do some fishermen engage in these activities as well, also out of desperation? What safety nets and policy interventions are needed to counteract these possibilities? Of course, not every poor person turns to crime, and we are not suggesting that poverty and desperation justify doing something illegal. But the poor do deserve government intervention, if not public sympathy. Helping comes in different forms, naturally. There are dole-outs and other forms of direct financial assistance that already exist to some degree. And there are programs that generate alternative employment, such as retooling fisherfolk that allow poor people to help themselves. Some might also argue that the plight of fisherfolk justifies a more forceful effort to legally assert our claims, perhaps even rally allies to our cause. They assume that China will cave under heavy international pressure, but China seems determined to stand its ground. Meanwhile, what happens to the fishermen and their families? Legal cases take time to resolve. But marginalized people do not have the luxury of time. Survival cannot be put off until better days. If governments can find a way to discuss offshore drilling arrangements for resources that may or may not exist, they should also find ways of helping out the poorest of the poor. And that's the editorial for Monday, December 13, 2021. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.